Hello everyone and welcome back again to Whiskey Wednesday. No auction views this week. Uh, auction views? Auction wins? I'm already stumbling over my words. This week we have a very highly anticipated whiskey with what I would argue is the greatest colour scheme any label has ever had. The Ardner Merkin Sherry Cask. Now I've said it many a time this year, last year, actually most, mostly this year and last year, I have a at the minute a very love-hate relationship when it comes to sherry cask whiskey. I'm buying less of it. If I am buying it, it tends to be in like bottle splits or like that Tamdu set that I was given by a friend. Situations like that, not really going big on them. But as an Arden American fan, and as someone who has had the chance to try samples of like the Paul Lenoir and uh, the Madeira casks and that kind of stuff, gifted to me by colleagues and friends, kind of made sense to get this, especially when it's only about £53 a bottle, which for a 50% alcohol, unchill filtered and natural colour, fully sherry cast matured whiskey at about six or seven years old is not too bad at all. In fact, I think they opened in 2016, so the most this can be is six. Let's roughly call it five. So about five year old stock. I'm sure Arden and Merkin have confirmed that somewhere. All of this whiskey is matured in a combination of Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez, first fill. And when you just look at this color, and again at this label, the offset of blue and gold on here, it's not even gold, it's more like copper, blue and copper. That label just had me straight away. I was like, ooh, what's that? Uh, and pretty much bought it straight away. Give a little bit of it to friends, had a couple of glasses at home, but here we are. And much like every other regular Arden Birkin release, it's a combination of unpeated and peated malt whiskies from their own distillery. So there's no outsourcing, it is not a blended malt, it is a single malt, but they peat and produce unpeated whiskey at the same distillery. A couple of people have already reviewed this, uh, that won't deter me though. Um, I just think that when it comes to new distilleries, Arden American have always had my monetary input in some way. Um, I've only reviewed one of them, but I've bought numerous different batches of when they used to code them with the dates they were released. Like I had about three or four of those bottles, they were all delicious. Tried the limited releases, done a few other things. Uh, tried a few single casks, they were really fun. Um, but when I saw this on the shelf, I was like, difficult to pass up, right? Peated, sherry, 50%, uh, just above 50 pounds a bottle. And even though the bottle gives you a great idea of what the color profile is like, there it is in a glass, looks even darker in the glass. Uh, luckily we can crack on with this review straight away. So let's smell, let us taste, and let us see what's going on with Arden American Sherry Cask. There's some quite typical and then some very non-typical notes on here. First of all, chocolate. Now, not an uncommon smelling note for a sherry barrel, but this is like someone has smoked a bar of chocolate. Sea salty, smoky milk chocolate. But then we get to the fruity elements of it. And it isn't raisin or apricot or anything like that, really. It's like cherry. And I suppose dates is a bit of a common cherry, like classic cherry note smell. But there's just such an aroma of like sour, black, dark, tangy cherry. Almost like Black Forest Gatto. I mean, you've got the chocolate, you've got the booze. It's almost got like a Kirsch thing with the cherry and the high alcohol. Smoky Black Forest Gatto. Who doesn't want that? Some of you probably don't want that, but I'd, I'd buy that on a menu. The smoke's really interesting. It's very floral, and I don't mean that in the sense of it smells like fruity. I mean it in the sense of it's not this heavy medicinal Classic West Coast Pete. It is up here. I can't think of a better way to put it. Instead of, I always think of things as like treble and bass. Um, shows you what prior career I used to have before working in whiskey. And uh, it's just a case of the smoke, typically for me and Pete, it's very bass, you know, when you talk about Lagavulin and Ardbeg, Lefroig. There are always exceptions to the rules with that kind of stuff. 
but for me, smoke sits down here and you've got these really bright sour apple notes and things and tropical fruit, that's all up here. For this, the initial aroma of the casks is down here. It's these deep, rich, dark, cherry, chocolate, salty notes. Whereas the smoke is up here. And it is saltiness. It's very saline-like. It's not iodine-y. It's not medicinal. And obviously it's a mix of peated and unpeated. Uh, but the amount of peated, I would assume it's 50-50 uh, in terms of the the malt influences. It's just perfect. As someone who's got like a... I could walk away from booze tomorrow. Chocolate? Absolutely not. And this just smells like chocolate. There's also a nice jammy note in it too. It's becoming like a raspberry jam sort of thing. Not the most complex nose on a whiskey I've ever smelled. But it is only a five-year-old product. So let's not be too harsh on it. Uh, in terms of the viscosity and the body, because I'm going to start doing this more, because I keep forgetting to. Very oily, very rich. I'm hoping the green jumper does a nice contrast of colour, because yeah, that wouldn't help. But yeah, holds the glass incredibly well. It's like a little chandelier. But taste is the important bit. Sorry, just noticed a QR code on the back of it. Oh, I've got a bottle number. Okay, so this is bottle 473, 13,998. That's really cool. Um, oh, okay. So this was bottled in quarters by different people. So Kelly Combe bottled 25% of it. Carney Hamilton bottled 25% of it. Jess Hamilton bottled 25% of it. Keith Johnston bottled 25% of it. Uh, it was bottled on the 20th of April, 2023. Uh, they've got some really nice readouts here on the, the environmental benefits, not benefits, but the green elements of their distillery. Um, they've got their own personal tasting notes where their nose, they taste like Murray mints and bonfires on a beach and Brazil nuts and sun-dried tomatoes. Interesting. The taste, they have like tarry rope, smoky bacon, old tractor shed and sticky spare ribs. The finish is crashing sea waves, sea salt, bothy fireplace and a cigar shop. Pretty cool. Um, and with this too, there's a part on the website which talks about your whiskey's traceability. So you can talk about the barley, the mashing, the fermentation. If we click on maturation at the bottom. Um, oh, it's just about like how the environment has that particularly nice element to it. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that quarter bottling thing I was talking about. Different people have bottled different percentages of that. That's fun. I've never noticed that QR code before. Uh, if you've got a QR code, scan it. You can see your bottle number. I didn't expect to have such a low bottle number. 473. Not letting their tasting notes influence mine. I can say I don't taste sticky spare rib or peanut butter brittle. What it is, is very dry, like really dry. It does have a, obviously it's matured in two types of sweet sherry. It does have a sweetness to it, but again, for me, it sticks with milk chocolate. If I'm gonna go different from that, I'd probably say it's like kind of treacly, golden syrup. Like it's chewy. It's oily, it's viscous. I can kind of see where they're coming from, the spare rib thing. I don't get any meatiness. The dryness, absolutely, you could in, like go with that as like peanut, hazelnut, I think they said on the nose. I guess like the vegetal thing to it. It has this. I can't think about to describe it. Caramelized, like, onion thing like think about like onion preserves and onion jam and stuff like that 
Uh, tried a lot of whiskies recently that have smelled a lot like cheese. Uh, a lot of Brooklady single casks and sort of unusual stuff like that. This feels like the chutney you'd kind of put on top of it. Sweet, salty, rich, jammy. It does smell quite nutty now, but I suppose that's the power of persuasion. The key thing for me, outside of all of this, oh, we'll talk about the finish too. Finish, there is that dryness, a nice bit of uh, like peppery, barrelly spice to it. Doesn't taste like five year old whiskey. Obviously the sherry casks are doing quite a lot of work here. I don't mean that in a bad way but it does not taste like a five-year-old whiskey at all. It also doesn't taste like it's 50% alcohol. Um, but then again, you know, Sherry's kind of maybe sanding some of those rougher edges of alcohol down. But the finish has some nice dryness to it. The smoke is just kind of whistling around your palate. Again, that trebly, florally sort of smoke. Scented, I suppose, is a better word to use. And just these hints of like nice coastal stuff. Um, I can't go too much into that without sounding like an absolute madman. But when you're walking on a beach and it's either just stopped raining or is about to start and you can kind of see or feel a storm coming. Yeah, this is mad. This might be the craziest tasting I've ever had. It tastes what I imagine that is like. That sounds mental. Um, but there's a, there's a density to it, there's a richness to it. There's a, a warning element of going, hey, this doesn't taste like 50%, but it is, so be careful. Um, yeah, that got a bit weird then, sorry about that. It doesn't taste like the approaching storm on a beach, that's just ridiculous. But it's salty, it's gently smoked. The chocolate thing goes, the, the, the finish is really orientated on this dryness that it has. Um, there's no sweetness. Kind of mossy, um, which I suppose is nice because that harks back to the, the youthful nature of the spirit and where indeed it comes from on the Arden American Peninsula. Really like this whiskey, really mm -hmm. like it a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure it's sold out everywhere, excuse me, by now. Um, this is going to take me quite a while to drink because it is rather dangerous um, in itself. Overall, though, in terms of scores, I would give that like a solid. That is a delicious bottle of whiskey. Um, Arden Merkin are proving to us that no matter what they do, they do it very well. I'm yet to have a bottle of Arden Merkin that I haven't enjoyed or a sample of Arden Merkin that I haven't enjoyed. Fabulous distillery, has all kinds of tricks up its sleeve. None of them are a letdown. Headlining show, um, truly fabulous. Cannot wait for the future with these guys. But yes, thank you all for watching. That is Arden Merkin Sherry Cask release. 10 out of 10. I will see you all next week. Thank you.